शिवासी शशिकांत साहू प्रोफेसर इन कार्डियोलॉजी यू एन मेहता इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ कार्डियोलॉजी एंड रिसर्च सेंटर अहमदाबाद आई विल बी प्रेजेंटिंग रिगार्डिंग क्वांटिफिकेशन ऑफ सीबेरिटी माइट्रोस्टोनोसिस बाय इको कार्डियोग्राफी आई हैव बीन गिवन ए टिपिकल क्लिनिकल सिनेरियो वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग केस आई एम जस्ट रीडिंग आउट ए 55 ईयर ओल्ड मेल स्मोकर बीइंग ट्रीटेड for copd and a known case of rheumatic heart disease presents with a dyspnea and exertion class 2 on auscultation he is having mid diastolic murmur with loud first heart sound and second heart sound the junior resident is confused as his echo outside echo report is showing mild mitral stenosis with moderate pulmonary hypertension so how do i quantify the severity of mitral stenosis using echocardiography just i am summarizing the case again 55 year old male smoker a known case of copd treated case of copd and known case of rheumatic heart disease now presenting to us as uh, a shortness of breath class 2 having mid diastolic murmur with loud s1 s2 on auscultation however the junior resident is confused with outside echo report with report of mild mitral stenosis with moderate pulmonary hypertension so how do i quantify the severity of mitral stenosis by echo one thing is very clear from this above clinical scenario that is symptoms are greater than expected for the degree of stenosis so what can be the clinical possibilities i have divided in two groups that is one patient related factors and second is echocardiography related factors so what are the patient related factors point 1 55 year old male a treated case of copd that means if a known case of moderate to severe copd according to new nice guidelines So might be the cause uh, sorry might be the cause for his shortness of breath second point as he is a middle aged man and a smoker he might be harboring coronary disease cardiomyopathy or hypertensive heart disease that might be the uh, cause for his shortness of breath according to the natural history of mitral stenosis third point he might be having uh, intermittent atrial fibrillation in about 50% cases according to his age and coming to fourth point he might be truly having mild mitral stenosis but moderate pulmonary hypertension could be due to moderate to severe copd in his case now coming to second that is echocardiographer related factors that could be due to inexperience of the echocardiographer in assessing valvular heart disease and secondly could be due to inherent technical difficulty while assessing in copd case due to poor transthoracic echo window and more vertical heart position in copd so how will approach echocardiographically a case of mitral stenosis with copd first i will have a assessment of valve morphology followed by assessment of severe mitral stenosis uh, first by mitral valve area calculation by planimetry pressure half time by continuity equation and by proximal isovelocity surface area method that is prisa and second is by mean transmitral pressure gradient Side side by side, I'll also assess coexisting mitral regurgitation or aortic stenosis or aortic regurgitation, and assessment of LV function, both systolic and diastolic. Then assessment of RV dimension and RV function. As is a case of COPD, and assessment of uh, tricuspid uh, regurgitation velocity and pulmonary systolic pressure. First comes coming to valve morphology assessment. Uh, morphology should be assessed in M mode equal to D mode equal to D equal. and uh, i'll look for valve mor- mobility valve thickening valve calcification and extent of valve pathology accordingly severity of mitral valve involvement can be scored by various uh, risk scores like uh, wilkins score cormier score padel score and etc et the most of post mitral leaflet in diastole and there is maintenance of a fixed relationship of the two leaflets to each other throughout diastole what is the typical m mode for echo features there is reduced ef slope here and there is anterior motion of the posterior mitral leaflet in diastole and they maintain a constant relation to each other throughout diastole now uh, then what are the typical 2d echo features Uh, in diastole, in particular in Planck's view, the AML will look like hockey stick or dome shaped. There is reduced immobility, reduced mobility, posterior mitral leaflet. And in 2D, particularly in Planck's short axis, mitral valve orifice will look like fish mouth. 
and there will be enlargement of left atrium with or without thrombus. Uh, in echo, this looks like this a 2D echo picture of metal stenosis. Uh, AMA looks like a hockey stick or dome shaped. And here in 2D parasitic short axis, just looks like fixed piece mouth where it is. If transthoracic echo images are suboptimal, as could be in our case like uh, COPD, trans esophageal echo or three dimensional echo imaging can be useful uh, for mitral morphology assessment in such case. So second is how will I assess severity mitral stenosis? That is done directly by mitral valve area calculation by planimetry, then by pressure uptime method, by continuity equation, and by proximal isovelocity surface area method is PISA, and indirectly by mean transmitral pressure gradient. The coming uh, to uh, area calculation first by uh, mitral area calculation by planimetry. Planimetry is considered as a reference measurement for mitral valve area. It is the direct measurement of mitral valve area, unlike other methods. Mitral valve inflow region, particularly mitral stenosis, that looks like a funnel shaped structure. So the narrowest area will be at the leaflet tips. What is the technical consideration uh, while measuring mitral valve area by planimetry? Planimetry should be done in 2D parasitic short axis view. 3D imaging allows more reproducible panel planimetry. And the, the uh, Doppler beams should be scanned from left atrium to left ventricular apex to identify the smallest orifice. Identification orifice at its maximal opening in mid-diastole. Uh, mid Measurement of plane uh, should be perpendicular to the mitral valve orifice, a very important point. And the gain setting should be kept at lowest. And you should trace the contour of the inner mitral valve orifice and include commissure if the commissure is open. What are the limitations? Limitations, particularly poor transthoracic echo window like COPD, obesity. Very difficult to have a proper image quality and to obtain orthogonal plane. And second is calcium. Calcium will make the tracing of the contour difficult. And third is important, if the commissure is open, then very difficult to be traced accurately. In echo, this 2D parasitic short axis echo, in planimetry, it looks like this, how we trace the border of the inner contour of the mitral valve orifice. Then come to second, that area calculation by pressure uptime method, PHT. PHT is defined as the time interval for peak pressure gradient to reach its half level. By empirical formula, it is calculated as mitral area is equal to 220 divided by pressure uptime. And measurement is done in continuous wave Doppler imaging from apical four chamber view. And PHT is less dependent on heart rate and flow across the valve. So what are the technical considerations? Uh, while measuring by uh, pressure of time. Number one, the intercept angle should be parallel to the flow and it should be constant throughout diastole to avoid distortion in shape of the curve. Distillation slope should be linear. In case of non-linear only distillation slope, change the position of the transducer and also angulation. If still non-linear, that is if still non-linear early distillation slope, use mid diastolic slope of the curve for PHT measurement. In atrial fibrillation, PHT, yeah, PHT is best measured from a bit with long diastolic cling interval. If there is concomitant severe aortic regurgitation or mitral regurgitation, that will underestimate the severity of mitral stenosis. These are the echo images while measuring pressure uptime. It is measured like this. And the formula is mitral valve area is equal to 20 by pressure uptime. And third is uh, area calculation by the continuity equation. The continuity equation based on the principle of conservation of flow, that is what comes in must go out. You should calculate both transmitral uh, stroke volume and trans aortic stroke, stroke volume. They should be equal. Uh, mitral, uh, trans, uh, our, uh, transmitral uh, stroke volume calculation from the formula is mitral area in the velocity time integral. That should be equal to LVOT area and uh, LVOT, velocity time, in, uh, uh, velocity time integral. So mitral area will be 0.785 into LVOT uh, square of the LVOT diameter into LVOT VTI divided by the uh, uh, VTI of mitral stenosis Z. So what are the technical consideration uh, while using continuity equation? Intercept angles should be parallel to the mitral stenosis uh, Z and there's uh, will be careful accurate stroke volume calculation is very important uh, in case of coexisting MR or AR is uh, continuity equation is inaccurate if there is coexisting MR mitral area will be falsely less 
that means there will be underestimation of the severity ms if there is coexisting air mitral valve area falsely will be more there will be that means underestimation of the severity of ms in uh, uh, this is tudico which picture how we measure lvot diameter in flax view and we trace the border particularly from pulse doppler in uh, lvot we trace the jet we will find the velocity time integral in lvot and uh, this tracing of the mitral stenosis jet we will find vti here and this is the formula for calculation of mitral area by continuity equation now the last is mitral area calculation by the pisa method though pisa method is more commonly used for regurgitant lesions but yes we can use mitral area calculation by pisa it's based on the principle of conservation of flow and continuity equation. Uh, in physiology, as blood in the left atrium converges towards mitral valve orifice, the blood flow velocity gradually increases and it forms a series of isovelocity hemispheric cells. The flow rate at the surface of hemisphere will be flow rate at stenotic mitral valve orifice, that is according to the continuity equation. The mitral area calculation will be 6.28 into square of the radius of the visa into aliasing velocity into alpha by 180, that is angle correction factor, divided by the peak mitral stenosis jet velocity. Then what are the technical consideration? First, the zoom, the area of mitral valve from the apical four chamber view, use color flow imaging of mitral stenosis jet and shift the zero baseline of color flow map upwards and aliasing velocity should be kept at 30 to 45 centimeter per second. Then freeze color flow image in a cine loop and identify an optimal frame by scrolling back and forth to find an optimal visa and measure its radius in left atrium. Determine the angle between the two mitral leaflets that is alpha at the arterial surface and alpha by 180 degree is called as angle correction factor. Then what are the drawbacks? Drawbacks, PISA method is actually cumbersome and it's not widely used to nowadays. A single color image yields only uh, the volume flow rate at one point time in diastole. Rather, the volume flow rate should be integrated over entire diastole period. That is the drawback of, uh, most important drawback of uh, uh, measuring mitral valve area by PISA. This is how uh, mitral area calculation done by PISA. The, and uh, this is the particular alpha between two layers of mitral valve and the atrial side. And this is how the radius of the pizza is uh, measured. And uh, this is the formula, two pi r square into total velocity, aliasing velocity divided by the mitral stenosis peak velocity into angle correction factor. Then that the indirect measure, uh, that is mitral valve severed by mean transmetal pressure gradient, is measured by the continuous doppler of mitral stenosis jet. Severe metal stenosis means more than 10 millimeter mercury, moderate means 6 to 10, and mild means more than uh, less than or equal to 5 millimeter mercury. So, so, what is the technical consideration while measuring mean gradient? Uh, the jet nearly always recorded from apical four chamber view. Careful transducer position and angulation is essential, and intercept angle should be near parallel and should be color flow imaging guided because at times metal stenosis jet may be eccentric. And it depends on transvalvular volume flow rate. In low cardiac output state and bradycardia, gradient may be low. In coexisting mitral regurgitation and immediate post exercise, gradient may be high. Now, coming to uh, uh, hemodynamically significant mitral stenosis, according to 2020 SCC AHA valvular disease guidelines, patients with progressive mitral stenosis, that is, mitral valve area more than 1.5 square centimeter but symptomatic, that means patient in class two or class three, or class four. Subject sub, such patients to supine bicycle exercise or treadmill exercise. With exercise, what happens? Mitral valve area does not change, but cardiac output and heart rate increase. And those contribute to increased transmitter pressure gradient and increase uh, uh, pulmonary capillary voice pressure and pulmonary tracheostomy pressure. So what is hemodynamic significant MS? That is defined as if immediate post-exercise mean mitral valve pressure gradient more than 15 millimeter mercury or voice pressure is more than 25 millimeter mercury or PA systolic pressure more than 50 millimeter mercury, they are considered as hemodynamical significant MS can intervene in such cases. So my take home message, the most reliable way to 
determine the severity of mitral stenosis is to calculate the area of mitral valve, not the transmitral pressure gradient. Mitral valve area can be determined directly by planimetry, continuity equation, and PISA method, indirectly by pressure half time method. Whenever there is ambiguity in mitral valve area measurement in any of the above methods described above, all four methods should be used in that particular case in order to arrive at a conclusion. Exercise hemodynamics should be done whenever there is discordance between clinical symptoms and eco findings in a patient with mitral stenosis as in your case. Thank you.